Welcome everyone. My name is Carolina Galeano and here we are to talk about inter an internship opportunity during the times of COVID-19. With me today here via Zoom, I have got Professor Eddie Adana. How are you? Good afternoon, Carolina. It's great to see you. Thank you so Good to see you too. Uh, and with us we have Haley Karp and Damien DeShield. How are you guys? Hi, thank Good you for having so uh, I would love to um, just get started with, tell us who you are, what you were doing during this internship. And part of why we wanna have this conversation just so everybody has a sense is that, you know, I'm just looking ahead at the next few months and I'm hearing from a lot of uh, my friends who are, who are still in school and their, their internship opportunities have suddenly just dried up and we're in this moment where we have to figure out how are we going to get experience for the fewer jobs that are going to be available, right? So we're in this sort of tight spot. And I just think that the Paul Peck Humanities uh, Honors Internship is a phenomenal way to get that experience. And so that's why we've invited you all to share about that. So go ahead. We'll start with Haley. So hi everyone, um, my name is Haley Karp. I am a second year student at Montgomery College, currently studying aerospace engineering. I know that might be slightly hesitant for a second because an engineer with a humanities internship, um, but honestly, this transpired to be one of the best possibilities and opportunities I could have ever had this past semester. Um, I met so many new mentors for me and, so many great new core hope, core hope friends of us and we all got to work together and accomplish this internship together and give great presentations at the end of it and it was really an opportunity of a lifetime great damien hi um so my name is damien the shield and i recently graduated from mc with a, an associate in international studies I'm planning to transfer to Swarthmore where I'll be doing political science and anthropology. Um, I basically heard about this internship at a Renaissance Scholars event. Um, there I was basically encouraged to take on as much opportunities in the honors um, program as possible. And I already wanted to do an internship before I leave MC and I was always interested in working in government. So the Library of Cong Congress um, internship was a great an exciting opportunity for me. Um, I had a great time there, and I worked with a Kugi fellow by the name of Michael Collins on an annotated bibliography where I learned a lot about social movements and their relation to political parties. Great experience. Excellent. And Professor Ardana, where do you fit into all of this? Oh, yes, thank you very much again for uh, inviting me. And I'm so happy that Haley and Damien, uh, two of our great uh, contributors to the internship are here. Uh, I also, in addition to my uh, work as a professor for uh, Spanish and German, uh, I also coordinate uh, the Paul Peck Humanities Institute Honors Internship Program um, as part of uh, the experience that was just described. And so I'm uh, responsible for the A to Z of the experience, everything from the recruitment to telling students about this great program that helps students, as the website says, uh, to discover new ways to develop professionally, academically, personally, socially, and in many other ways, also work in groups and to, uh, to troubleshoot, to work in uh, developing problem solving skills. And so I work in that respect. Um, and so as we can see here on our website, we have uh, some students here showing uh, their experience in action. And um, I can certainly talk a little more about the, the requirements and things like that at, at, your, at, your, um, at your prompting. Excellent. Well, I, thank you all. And I'm really excited that you all have an opportunity to share a little bit about what you did during this internship. So Haley, Damien, what were you um, exactly doing during your internship? What tasks? Give us a sense. What was your day-to-day -day like? What did you enjoy the most? So um, for us, we kind of divide it into two separate parts. So we have the Library of Congress side and then we have the MC school side. And so what I did personally with the Library of Congress is I was given two scholars to work with. 
The first one, Dr. Susan Snyder, who actually works as a professor in cognitive sciences, she had me do a lot of kind of free range research. Um, it was really kind of her and I would sit down, have one on ones, and I would walk out of the meeting with 10 pages of just things that I needed to research. So that was definitely a new kind of experience for me to manage, um, but it was exciting. I got to research things that I'd never found before, look at technical reports that definitely opened my mind in a scientific way that I never knew. Um, so that was really exciting for me. And then my second scholar I worked with, with the Congress, um, was a graduate student and I got to help her with her dissertation work on extraterrestrial life forms. So yeah, basically talking about aliens and if aliens are out there, which she totally believes and it's exceptional the work she has, um, how are we gonna communicate with these aliens? And so that was fascinating work, um, learning about how we can use communication skills we have and transform it to radio signals outside of earth. So definitely two very unique kind of scientific um, fields that I got to work with. And then for the final, the MC academic side, I got to work with a great professor, Dr. Takahara, and she was my guidance throughout the whole thing. She helped me with the coursework that was required of us as students of MC. Um, and she helped me kind of take the information I was learning and collect it into very thorough thoughts and create a research paper and a well-written PowerPoint that I got to explain all my information I learned. So definitely a great, a great time with everyone and all of my mentors were phenomenal. That sounds so exciting. Who would think that yeah, there's, I mean, there's actual research on you know, aliens. I mean, that's just wild. Um, so very, very cool. What about you, Damien? What were you doing? What did you enjoy the most? All right. So for me, I worked with one um, Kluge scholar closely. Um, again, I worked with Michael Collins, Dr. Michael Collins, and I was investigating the afterlife of democratic integration. So basically, we were exploring minority and stigmatized groups, um, looking at different social movements and their formation of political parties. We're basically trying to see um, if their participation in, um, in, a, in that political party allowed them to reach their aims of the social movement. So we also looked at dif um, different inequalities that compound within um, society. We also looked, um, it was an interdisciplinary focus, so I looked at political science, anthropology, history, sociology, different disciplines. Um, the main themes were democracy represent, representation, as well as the minority stigmatized groups. And um, I basically enjoyed reading of the articles. It really allowed me to, to learn a lot more. And it was interesting to me overall. Um, so the main thing I would say, the readings were very interesting to me. Like I learned a lot. Um, for my research paper for the course itself, I worked on a topic related to structural racism in, in the US and looked at different levels of social inequality. And I used black political thought to, to investigate it and put forward possible solutions, which is very um, relevant to what's happening in the US right now. So I'm glad I got to do that. Certainly. Uh, now, Professor, is this internship for those that are just interested in in research and the humanities? How or who can apply? Tell me a little bit about what who should apply. That's a great question. Yeah, certainly. So um, students of all fields are eligible to apply. Uh, so we encourage, as you just saw with Haley, as students from the so-called STEM fields, science, technology, engineering, mathematics, right? Uh, and uh, you see Damien working from the humanities, social, social sciences, sociology uh, perspective, anthropology perspective. And so we definitely encourage students who are passionate about interdisciplinary connect connections between fields to apply. Students must be enrolled at MC currently to apply for the program. Um, they need to have completed at least 15 credit hours uh, of coursework at the college. Um, students need to be uh, at least 16 years of age at the time of the internship start time. Um, the GPA uh, threshold is a 3.4. 
That's also to be an honors eligible students. And we often, um, not always, but we often um, recruit students from the honors programs, from the Renaissance Scholars programs particularly. And so it's a nice bridge for the students who've had that experience uh, to put a little cherry on top and uh, really go deeper with their, their, uh, their experiences from English. Um, and speaking of English, students have, need to have completed English 102 with at least a B. Uh, definitely an A is always really good because you get to put all those writing skills to practice in this writing intensive experience. Um, and students need to have been matriculated uh, in a degree, meaning they need to have declared a major uh, such that we wanna make sure that students are on track uh, to build that bridge to a transfer institution uh, and really have a clear idea of their academic goals. Uh, the program is also geared towards students who are seeking out mentorship, because as I mentioned, as part of the orientation program and part of the application program, that in and of itself is a, is a mentoring experience from the moment they apply to the moment that they get accepted to the moment that students work with their individual faculty mentor at the college to the connections they make at the Library of Congress or the Smithsonian or any, any other approved institution. All of that is designed to help the student build a more robust experience. And um, again, this, the problem solving skills are invaluable uh, for anybody and communication skills are important in all fields. And so we really encourage the students who are looking to apply to this program and um, wanna learn more or to feel free to seek me out. And also I invite them to connect to previous um, students, uh, alumni uh, of the experience to hear firsthand. And I also welcome you to visit the website. We have some really interesting resources for students. Thank you for that. So um, I also, for anybody that's watching this live, I wanna invite you to ask any questions you might have, either of the former interns who have this real fresh experience from the spring 2020, uh, both your internships uh, went from just in-person internships to virtual, right? So let's talk a little bit about that. Um, tell me what that was like and imagine maybe for a moment that I, I am a hiring manager that wants to consider you for a job. And one of my main concerns is, you know, can this person work in this remote environment? So tell me, tell me what that was like and what would you say to a hiring manager? So I think that the remote was a little bit difficult at first because obviously we weren't expecting it. Um, we went from a job that was two to three days a week, eight to five at least, um, to then putting ourselves in an entirely new atmosphere and being at home and the craziness of that in and of itself. Um, so definitely the transition, I know for me personally, didn't happen in a snap of a fingers. I really had to kind of sit back and talk to my mentors and figure out, okay, let's assess what I can really do and what I can really complete in this new environment. Um, and with that came a very important realization of communication. Um, the communication skills that I learned from the remote experience was incredible. Um, my mentors were always willing to work with me and to help me kind of guide myself to be successful. Um, because I was at first kind of like, oh my gosh, how am I even going to get this stuff done? I can all I want to do is sit in my sweatpants all day. Um, so it's hard. It's hard to initially kind of adapt, but I think it was an opportunity for everyone to kind of find what works for you if you need a full work schedule. And that's what I found worked for me. I kind of isolated myself, made a desk, and I put those hours into business when I need to work for school. Um, so that was definitely a very important part of the remote transition. And I definitely invite people, if you are going to take this remote step for an internship, always be in contact, take that initiative and be the person to first make that communication. Um, you are the only person that can advocate for yourself and can really assess the quality and amount of work you are going to be able to complete. So definitely communication is my one total getaway from this whole thing. And I definitely want to recommend all future students, interns to definitely take that into account. That's great advice. Damien, for you, what was that like? And I, I see you're muted, so I don't know if I can hear you. Oh, sorry, we do not hear you. One second. 
Let's see. Ah, uh, there you go. Can you hear me? Yep. Okay. Um. All right. I was wondering if you could hear me well because I'm both on the call and. Okay. Um. So I was able to. At first, the transition was very hard. You know, it was hard staying productive. It was hard to keep yourself motivated, but. Eventually, through trial and error, I was finally able to work it out. So what worked for me was basically finding out what works for me in terms of the best times for me to be productive. Um, I had to be mindful of maintaining my mental health, so I had to um, take time to relax and de-stress as needed. Um, I also um, learned about this technique called the Pomodoro technique um, in order to increase my productivity, and that I incorporated that into uh, my activities. I was basically working on the annotated bibliography still, so um, there was not much uh, difficulty in changing what I need to do. I was able to use online databases to complete my research. Um, it was also important for me to plan and stay organized. I had more meetings with my faculty mentor, um, uh, Professor Eddie Arana. I, um, also had to communicate effectively, as Haley mentioned. Um, so the main takeaways I would say from um, all these things I did was I was, it's important to plan and stay organized, which is important to any organization. Um, the need for effective communication. Um, again, the use of the Pomodoro technique was really helpful. Um, I had to stay self-motivated and disciplined and I was able to learn to negotiate and be a self-advocate, as what Haley mentioned. That's great. And, um, you know, we actually, we have a, we got to, to capture a, uh, one of the students who was working on a project for, I think, I think it's called the Freedom, the Freedom Village. I forget the exact name, but um, I think it would be awesome to, to hear about that student experience because it gives you a picture of how you guys are collaborating with experts, with scholars, um, and just having that, that is a real unique opportunity for a community college student to have. You know, um, I, I, I was fortunate enough to also get to do research at, at a level where you're still a consider, considered a junior, right, in your university career. So, it was it was awesome, and I got to do that kind of research and present it at a academic conference back when I was at MC a long time ago. Um, but you guys are having similar opportunities, and we'll we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that. Um, but if we can, uh, let's roll that that video and that student's story. Now, what's Freedman's Village? It was a town made up of African American slaves, freed slaves that was where Arlington National uh, Cemetery is today. Started by some of Robert E. Lee's freed slaves when he took over the Confederate Army, this town grew to as many as 3,300 people in the 40 years of its existence. And this town helps explain to us a little bit about what Reconstruction was like in the District of Columbia, Virginia, and Maryland. And it gives us a glimpse of what the lives of the newly freed slaves were like here in Washington, D.C. So the, I'm doing a lot of research on the lawsuits that uh, helped kill the city, as well as the lives of the people who were there and what happened to them. I was looking more on the legal side of these uh, cases, and uh, particularly looking at the Supreme Court case uh, where uh, Lee and uh, the United States, uh, Lee sued the United States for his, uh, the land. Um, and I'm also looking at uh, Sojourner Truth and the time she was uh, assaulted uh, at a streetcar. And um, she had a lawsuit and won uh, and uh, helped to desegregate uh, uh, streetcars. With Caleb's help, I'm able to get a fuller view of what happened to this unknown city 
that sits where America's most hollowed burial ground is today. Uh, this research will help us flesh out not only the lives of the newly freed slaves, but how the U.S. government and other political forces helped and shaped the lives of people after the Civil War. Uh, I think this project will be one of the first of its kind, while the city is known uh, by historians, is not known to the general public. And I see the project, along with Caleb's help, to be groundbreaking and we'll be able to learn a lot more about what life was like for these newly freed slaves in Washington, D.C. when we get done. Wonderful to hear that. So what about you guys? Are you, uh, did you get to do that, that research um, and what, what came of it? Or what did you focus on? So um, my research actually specifically worked a lot on the possibilities of merging AI, so artificial intelligence, with human intelligence. Um, and one of my favorite examples to bring up is mentioned in one of Dr. Schneider's books, and it's this idea of a mind design store. So in place of an Apple store, we have mind design where you can walk in and say, hey, can I please have the um, T8, T89 calculator mind chip? And instead that calculator chip could be implemented into your brain, giving you massive amounts of speeds to be able to do calculations at the rate of a TI-89 calculator. So the ideas are astonishing, but the research honestly came from what currently is happening. People are inventing new technologies and new artificial intelligent technologies are being developed all over the world. And there are no real regulations yet to kind of almost set a pathway for these new technologies, which was another aspect of my research with Dr. Schneider. And it was honestly, every aspect was fascinating. Um, we also kind of touched a little bit on the philosophical side of things and at what point does a human no longer exhibit self characteristics if we were to be merging ourselves with these technologies? Um, so definitely a lot of fascinating parts came from that. So um, yeah, so that was a lot of the work that I did with her. Cool, what about you, Damien? All right, so for, for me, again, it was focused on, um, wait, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, uh, for me, it was focused on um, the social movements again and how they formed political parties. So we looked at reasons why social movements light up to forming those political parties. And we also looked at the ways in which there would be successes and failures. So um, that, that came with a concept of, um, that com came with a, party, um, for, it was called party formation. And we also looked at the political system in its entirety to see what allows for democracy, what allows for representation. So I was able to learn about different cultures, different types of politics, like um, LGBTQ, um, anti-racist type of politics. Um, so it was a great learning experience. And you are, you just graduated, correct? And you'll be transferring. So tell us what are your plans, Damien? Again, yeah, so I'm going to Swarthmore. I, before I was planning to just do political science, but now I'm thinking, based on all of this research I did, I'm actually thinking of doing anthropology also, because I'm interested in that, um, that dimension. So again, I'm interested in continuing this type of research and looking at social movements um, and different ways in which we can create social change. That's awesome. Professor, in the short time we have left, um, when is it strategically good to apply? And Haley and Damien, if you guys have any tips for any students who are interested in applying in what I consider one of the few virtual or flexible internships um, currently available during the times of COVID? 
That's great. Thank you very much for that question. Uh, certainly, it's really important for students to get clear about what their goals are with this internship and in, in so far as when they apply and when they uh, subsequently perhaps are, are accepted. Oftentimes, our students have uh, two semesters under their belt. Uh, so that means that two semesters at the college oftentimes give students that, that solid framework for um, building relationships with professors who can perhaps write letters of recommendation for them and speak specifically about um, their merits and their experiences and their strengths as, as potential interns. Uh, it also allows students to really get acclimated to the campus culture, perhaps when we are on campus or get involved in the campus community or in the uh, virtual uh, college community, perhaps. Uh, and so perhaps uh, be leaders in organizations, campus organizations, um, demonstrate their leadership in the classroom and really build those, uh, as I mentioned, those networks across the college, which are so vital in getting that practice because internships are essentially professional academic um, preparation opportunities for the, the working professional student in the future. And so students as part of this program also engage in 240 hours of internship work. And so students, um, as Haley mentioned, uh, when they are on site, oftentimes do two to three full days of work. Um, obviously during the virtual uh, platform times, students will do something very similar um, and um, the platforms have been adapted for that. I wanted to circle back a little bit about what some of the time management things that were brought up. And definitely in addition to the troubleshooting and the problem solving, the relationship building and all that beautiful stuff you saw with Caleb and um, the academic, um, uh, discovery that students engage in, which is really part of the Kluge Center, a part of the Smithsonian, uh, and also part of the Library of Congress, those sites that we serve, and obviously part of the academic world that we live in at Montgomery College, uh, students are called upon or challenged to devise their own independence in managing their time, and they're accountable. Uh, the college has one of their mottos is that they're accountable for the results. Students are called upon to model that behavior, and we process uh, those different skills with them throughout the entire uh, experience. And as coordinator um, throughout, throughout this past semester, we've worked closely with students to give them an opportunity to be in the driver's seat of owning their process, uh, which is so, so important for building independence and uh, building that sense of gratitude towards this program, which is a really good program. Um, speaking of last gratitude, there's also a scholarship associated with this program. Students who are accepted get a scholarship that pays for the honors 275 course, a three credit course. And so students are left at the end with a really robust, beautiful experience. And um, uh, it's overall a great, unique experience. As you mentioned, lastly, a very few community colleges have this type of relationship. Um, and we are uh, really special, especially motivated to continue that with our institutions because very few institutions like ours, like you said, have the second or third year like experience like this one. That's right. Um, it's a phenomenal partnership. And uh, real quick, I think we really only got about 30 seconds. So give me your best tip for, apl for applying. Haley. Do it. Apply. Just do it. <laughs> Damien? Work on writing and research skills, um, competing um, presentations, and submitting your papers, basically. Great. And as you all know, you can go to the, the MC website and look for the Paul Peck Humanities Institute internship. I'm going to leave you with one last uh, quick video to, that captures what we've talked about, but look for more information on the website. Thank you all so much. The time just flew by, <laughs> but it was fun talking to you all and learning about the internship. So have a good one and be safe. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye. The Smithsonian Faculty Fellowship Program represents a rewarding academic professional development opportunity for faculty at Montgomery College.